Hello everyone. Welcome to the video series on mobile application development with Flutter. And in this particular video, we will see how to create tab bar with corresponding tabs. So tab bars and tabs are very important sometimes because it's the app bar area that gets the first attention when a user opens a mobile application. And it's an opportunity for you to provide your awesome functionality direct in line of sight with the user. Let's go ahead and see how we can create tab bar with corresponding tabs. In this particular video, we will also talk about how to create stateless and stateful widgets and also associate it with corresponding tabs in the tab bar. We will also see a very important difference between stateless and stateful widgets in case of usage with tab bars and tabs. So let's go ahead and start. So as of now, you can see a bare minimum scaffold material designed application with a app bar with a title. Now, since tab bars are part of this particular app bar, which means that we need to provide something in the app bar constructor to create a tab bar. We do the same by passing a parameter called bottom and this parameter takes tab bar. This tab bar parameter takes tabs and this tabs contains all the tabs that will be displayed as part of this tab bar, which means that this will take array of widgets. Okay. Now at this point of time, let's just create two text widget saying that text as first tab and text as let's say second tab. Now this is the code which needs to be written to display a tab bar with tabs in an app bar. But if I go ahead and just do a hot reload instead of seeing a tab bar, we will get into some error. Here it says that tab controller is not available for tab bar. This is a necessity for creating a tab bar. In few moments, we will come to know why this is a necessity. But first, let's understand how we can provide the tab controller. So there are two ways by which we can provide a tab controller to a tab bar. What we can do is that we can provide a controller parameter in the tab bar and we can create a tab controller. But this is a bit complicated way of doing the same. However, there is an easy way which is also available. Let's talk about the easy way as of now. We will talk about this way in some other videos. So what I will do is that I will get rid of this. And what I will do is that I'll just cut this scaffold. In the material design home, I will use what we call a default tab controller. So default tab controller takes care of everything what a tab controller needs to do almost 95 plus percent of things. Okay. Now length as you could have guessed that number of tabs in the tab bar as of now we have two and in the child we will paste complete scaffold. Okay. Now what I did in the earlier material designs the home used to be the scaffold but in here I am giving it to default tab controller and the scaffold will be the child of default tab controller. Again, in few moments, we will come to know why this is the case. Let's first close this particular application and reload it again. Okay, now as you can see that I have both the tabs available over here as a text first tab and second tab. We do not need to create text only tab. We can even create icons. So let's go ahead and create icons instead of text only tab. To create an icon, we will have to widget called tab. In the tab, I have to provide a parameter called icon and that will be using icon, uh, icons dot, let's say Android. Okay. And let me create another tab where I'll say icons dot cloud download. Let me go ahead and do a hot reload. You can see that these icons are now represented as tabs. Now these tabs are useless until and unless we associate some actions to it. So before we associate some action, let's find the place where the action happens. If I click the tab over here, where do you want the action to be in the screen? If I click this particular tab, where you expect to see the action in the screen, which means that the tab actions will happen on the body of the scaffold. So what we will do is that in the scaffold, we'll put the body parameter and in here we will say tab bar view. In tab bar view, we will take a children, which means that it will take array of widgets. Now 
in here we can provide the actions so as we have two tabs let us provide two action as text uh, android selected and let's say cloud download selected let me go ahead and do a hot reload and you can see that android selected will come if android tab is selected cloud download is selected will come if the cloud download tab is selected okay now how this happens this happens because of the tab controller and this is the reason why default tab controller has to encapsulate a scaffold because whenever you click on a tab which is a part of an app bar the action happens on the body okay and the action takes place based on the sequence for first tab the first widget will get selected for second tab the second widget will get selected and so on and so forth so this is the way we create a tab bar and associate some actions to it now let's talk about stateless and stateful widgets let's now create a stateful widget and associate the action with a stateful widget so let me go ahead and create a stateful widget so i'll say create class android action extends stateful widget and in here i'll do a create state and i'll return android action app if you are still not comfortable with how to create stateful and stateless widgets please go ahead and see my videos on the same topic before proceeding further okay now let me create a state i'll say class android action app extends state android action and in here i will override my build function so in this particular widget i want to display two widgets a text widget with a counter and a checkbox so let me create two variables over here i'll say int counter equal to 0 and bool um, tick mark equal to false now what i will do is that i'll say return column because i need more than one widget and children i'll display a text widget as counter value is equal to dollar counter and i'll display a checkbox with value as tick mark and on changed as uh, let me just write a function that's a new value and in here i'll do set state you know what set state does it just redraws the stateful widget again so in here i'll say counter plus plus and i'll say tick mark is equal to new value okay now let me go ahead and reload my application but before that let me call this android action stateful widget instead of this text so i'll call android action and let me go ahead and do a hot reload some issues they expected to find semicolon that's all let me go ahead and do a hot reload and you can see that hot reload is done and if i click the android button you can see a text widget this one counter value and a checkbox so if i go ahead and click on the checkbox you can see that the counter value is incremented now what i will do is that i will go to cloud download and come back to this android action you can see that the counter value is reset to zero and if i just go ahead and click on the checkbox the counter value increase if i go there and come back here the counter value is again zero this means that whenever a tab is associated with a stateful widget it regenerates the widget every time the tab is selected now let's see what happens with a stateless widget let me create a stateless widget for this cloud download tab so let me create a class called cloud action extends stateless widget i'll also have a counter over here let's say counter equal to zero and i'll override the build function in here i'll simply print a text widget i'll say return text 
counter value is equal to dollar counter and before returning i'll just say counter plus plus and i will call this cloud action from type bar view and this cloud action will be called for second tab which is the cloud download let me go ahead and do a hot reload it's done now i'll click in over here and i go to cloud download tab you can see that the counter value is 1 which is expected because it was 0 and before returning the text I incremented it to 1. I came back here. In the stateful widget as expected it is reloaded and counter value is 0 but if I go to cloud tab you can see that counter value is 2. If I go again you can see it is 3. If I go again you can see it is 4. So this is the peculiar behavior which I wanted to tell you because what happens with a stateless widget that stateless widget is not getting reloaded every time when the tab is created which is not the case with stateful widgets. Frankly I do not know the reason behind this why Flutter decided to do that but yeah I wanted to let you know that something like this happens when you use a stateless widget and when you use stateful widgets. That's all for this particular video. Thanks a lot guys. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment to like, comment, share and subscribe. If you have any queries, please let me know in the comment section and please, please, please do subscribe and share. Thank you. Thanks a lot.